Welcome, everyone. Um, this is Una Daly from the Community College Consortium for OER. And uh, we're so glad you could make it today to join us for our webinar on OER and zero textbook cost degree initiatives. Um, for those of you who are members or have been uh, participating with us for a long time, you'll know that this has been a topic near and dear to our hearts. We've been working on um, OER and uh, zero textbook cost degrees uh, since 2015. So working with um, institutions, uh, faculty, um, and promoting the benefits of this, um, along with uh, finding solutions for some of the challenges. And so we have three um, experts who have been working on this uh, at their institutions or within their systems um, um, from California, Minnesota, and New York, who are really going to um, share with you um, how they went about this and um, the successes and also the challenges that they've hit um, along the way to help their students um, be successful. So um, our agenda, uh, I'm gonna introduce our speakers, which I'm very excited to do in just a moment. We'll um, have a very quick overview of CCCOER and uh, then we'll get right into those presentations. Um, from our speakers and we will then go into kind of a panel mode um, and um, We will invite questions from you the audience um, and we, we really welcome those um, And we also have some questions that I'm going to ask um, the panelists as well And that will take care of us. So uh, first up, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Lori Beth Larson She's um, English faculty at Central Lakes College in Minnesota. And Lori, do you want to say hello and a little something about what you do on a day-to-day -day basis? Sure. I am. Um, I teach. Uh, let's see. I teach English. I teach reading, and I teach the Global Studies class here. And I am. Um, and now OER lead, so I get a couple credits to to keep this uh, going here on our campus. Wonderful. Well, we're so glad you could make it today, Lori Beth. Thank you. And next up, I'd like to introduce Tony DeFranco, who is the um, SUNY OER Services Campus Strategist at the State University of New York. And um, prior to that, uh, Tony was faculty and in instructional design at Tompkins Cortland Community College, who is a longtime leader in OER, dating back a long, <laughs> dating back to, I'm going to say 2011-12. So you've been in this business for a while, Tony. A long time. Learned a lot of lessons along the way. Made a lot of mistakes along the way. So hopefully we've corrected those over the years. Uh, thanks, Sunny. Yeah, I'm a campus strategist for SUNY OER Services. It's a shared service of the State University of New York system. And uh, my primary role is to work with campuses in uh, implementing and scaling OER across their campuses. Uh, we have specific areas that, that we focus on. Mine happens to be managing the degree programs as well as a few other things, but I'm happy to, to be in this role and uh, um, it's great working with the campuses. Great, welcome, Tony. And uh, last but not least is James glapa Grossclang, who is uh, Dean at uh, College of the Canyons and um, I'm sorry at the moment, my, I should know this. Uh, James Jeez, has been, uh, James is a really a co-founder of CCCOER, so has been with us for a long time. And you know, I've had the pleasure of working on a few projects in California related to uh, ZTZ degrees. James? Yeah, thanks, Una. Hey, everybody. Uh, pleased to be here, been hanging around CCCOER for a while. Happy to be here and support all the work that uh, people do uh, with CCCOER. And now I've got the good fortune to support work across California community colleges. In my day job at College of the Canyons, I get to work with our online education team, our library team, and our learning center or tutoring center team. And uh, yeah, happy to be here. Great. So we have, as you can see, we have an outstanding set of speakers to share with you today. Um, so for those of you who might be new to CCCOER or to our webinars, um, we've been around for almost 12 years now, and I know there's another co-founder on the uh, uh, on the uh, 
webinar today, which is Barbara Olowski, who was actually there at the very beginning when we uh, were founded. Um, and our mission hasn't changed a great deal, although the landscape has changed, but we still have the same goals. We're um, trying to help students be success, successful in their, um, in their academic careers, and we do that through expanding awareness and access to high quality OER. And we know that the key to that is supporting faculty choice and development um, around these open resources. Um, and um, I want to just show you a quick map of our, of our membership. Um, and we are very pleased to have um, our members with us today. And many of you who participate who aren't currently members, and we welcome you if, when, whenever that's appropriate. And our latest members that just came on this month is the Virtual College of Texas. And we're very pleased to have them. And I believe Judith Sebesta, uh, their executive director, is with us today. So welcome, uh, Judith. And um, also Reedley College in, in California, and that uh, is represented by Amanda Tainter. I'm not sure if Amanda's on today, but uh, she is quite the OER leader at her college, and we're very pleased to have uh, Reedley join us as well. So getting to our topic today, um, our three speakers, of course, are going to touch on um, many um, motivations behind um, the OER and Z2Z degree pathways and, um, you know, both from an institutional perspective and possibly a system perspective. Um, I think many um, institutions get started around the cost barriers um, of textbooks for students. Um, but looking at um, it from an equity perspective is also a very helpful way to look at how these Z degrees um, make it easier for students who may be low income or underrepresented um, to be successful in these pathways. And many of um, our colleges around the country are involved in pathway programs and um, the ZTZ and the OER degree uh, programs align quite well with the pathway programs by eliminating um, potentially unnecessary coursework, which helps students to graduate uh, more quickly. From an institutional perspective, um, these Z degrees can be an incentive to enroll students uh, because it significantly can reduce their cost of achieving an, a degree. And um, you know, one thing that isn't often mentioned up front, but it's a, it's a wonderful professional development experience for faculty and staff, and can lead to really improved pedagogy um, throughout. Um, throughout the institution. So lots of potential benefits, and we're gonna hear from um, some folks who are working right there in the field, and we'll give you some specific examples. So first up, I'm gonna turn this over to Lori Beth, and I'm gonna stop sharing so that you can share from your computer. And let's Gotta see. unmute myself. <laughs> Perfect, yeah. I see my mouth moving and can't hear. Hi, everybody. I'm going to share this. Uh, slideshow with you. So I am again from a very small college here in Minnesota. Uh, we have about 5000 students 5500 students. So we're pretty, pretty little. But we do have, uh, over the last few years, we have developed um, a, a Z degree. Now, is it sharing the, the large screen? Um, can we, can, we can see your slides. Excellent. All right, so uh, we have a number of courses and our Z degree uh, came about rather organically as uh, Karen Picula started learning circles here. Some of you may have Heard of her she works now with the Minnesota State um, so she ran learning circles and we just continually added course by course in a variety of goal areas until we came up with uh, enough courses uh, offered every year in each of the goal areas so that students can graduate from Central Lakes with an associates uh, associates degree um, without paying any money for a textbook we have a few areas that are, are, are uh, have, have smaller, and not every single one is offered every semester, but enough so that um, within a year, they're all offered. 
So here we have our registration page. I wanted to take a look at this because right there in the middle is our only indication that this course has a zero textbook cost. And this is uh, how students can find out, but we also do have the option that students can find out from our website. Our website uh, will has a like a PDF simply showing that that all these uh, courses are available, which ones specifically are available for fall. Hopefully this process will become a little more efficient, but for now it's, it works for us in a small college. We also do have uh, Minnesota State, um, a repository. We have a few books uh, available on here. This is our own our repository for OER materials that are being developed. And uh, we're working on getting more up there. It's pretty limited at the moment, but it's starting. So we did a survey uh, recently of our students. This is the first first uh, survey we've we've done, and of course it it uh, it's similar to what other people are finding. Of course, that lots of students are enrolled in courses with expensive textbooks. Um, I was thinking a little bit about why our 20% of the students said they had not purchased a required textbook, which is a little lower than it seems the national average, but a large percentage of our population buy their textbooks with uh, financial aid. Huge percentage. So I think that when they, they get that money, then they, they are able to afford some kind of textbook, and it's not always a choice between textbook and rent. Of course, we know it often is. So we also have a Minnesota-wide initiative. We talked about this a little earlier. Uh, Northland Community College, um, we're gonna create some uh, degree programs, uh, Z degree programs. And I do believe we asked most recently, I don't believe it's quite ready to go in the fall, but it's certainly in the works. Um, and uh, many of you probably know a lot more about this. C Central Lakes College was not involved in this distance ed consortium to offer a Z degree, but this, uh, this was the information I received most recently about other Z degree opportunities in the future. So our future goals, obviously, we need to let students know a little bit more about what options here are available. Of course, we continue to add. We continue, we added about uh, five more classes using OER materials this semester. We'll be continuing to add some more in the summer and possibly uh, again in the fall next year. We do have a sustaining budget to continue this for at least another year and a half and then we'll have to go from there. And uh, we also have to target a few of the, the goal areas where there's only a limited uh, number of courses. All right, I'll stop this share. All righty. Uh, thank you very much, Lori. And um, so as Lori's um, effort, as she, as she has said, is, is primarily at uh, her college right now, but um, mm -hmm. there were three colleges in Minnesota that produced an online degree as part of Achieving the Dreams um, program. And um, I think, Tony, you're going to speak to that. Um, and just be, thank you, Tony. And be, before you get started, Achieving the Dream, of course, uh, did um, the OER degree program. We had invited the folks from Achieving the Dream to join us today, but they were unable to. Uh, mm -hmm. They worked with 38 colleges throughout um, the United States, and three of those were from Minnesota. So, yeah, thank you for sharing that. Thank you. And Tony, uh, why don't you go right ahead? Okay, everyone can see my screen, I trust? Yes. Okay. Um, so I'll talk about not just the OER degree programs in the State University of New York or SUNY as we're better known, but how they're being developed, expectations of the participating campuses, how we're supporting the campuses and the goals for developing these OER degree pathways. This is a snapshot of OER efforts at SUNY over the past couple of years. Of the 64 campuses, 59 have an OER initiative. There may be others that, that we don't know about yet. We're always pleasantly surprised when we find out about new campuses, but uh, overall, um, 
we're, we've covered quite a bit in, in the SUNY system. Over 155,000 students across the state are enrolled in at least one OER course. We estimate that uh, students have saved over $16 million in costs for textbooks and access codes. We estimate that students, um, you know, uh, and that the number of students is actually growing. Um, we're quickly approaching 5,000 different course sections taught by over 1,000 faculty, and some campuses have reported increases in success and retention rates, which is very promising. And we're looking forward to uh, seeing more of that across the system as the numbers start to come in. So a consortium of five SUNY community colleges participated in the ATD OER degree initiative. The goal was for each college to develop uh, at least one degree pathway. A couple of the campuses, Herkimer and uh, Tompkins Cortland, where I originally came from, ended up developing two programs at their campuses, which resulted in a total of seven programs. Uh, SUNY is funding some additional OER degree pathways. Three of the Achieving the Dream campuses are involved in the current OER degree pathway efforts, along with six other campuses that are new to OER degree pathways. We're pleased to have the first four-year school involved in development of an OER pathway at SUNY Oneonta. They originally started their OER degree program as a Bachelor of Science in Applied Liberal Arts, but that has transitioned from a degree to an OER gen ed pathway. Uh, both Oneonta and SUNY system felt that this was probably a better approach for them because it would have a broader impact on their students. We're also excited to have efforts underway for our first master's degree OER pathway. This is an MA in learning and emerging technologies that's being developed at Empire State College. We've been very active at OER for quite some time. The college and prison program housed at Marcy Correctional Facility near Utica, New York, provides individuals who are incarcerated an education provided by Mohawk Valley Community College, who is also involved in ATD. That program is being offered as a business administration AAS OER degree, and it's the first prison-based OER degree program in SUNY. At least one of the schools is offering their degree program completely online. Another will offer their degree 80% online with the full intention of moving that to completely online uh, very soon. Others are offering a mix of online and face-to-face -face courses within their degree pathways. The OER Degree Pathway Initiative is being led by SUNY OER Services, which is a shared service organization for which I work uh, at SUNY uh, for institutions looking to build, support, expand OER uh, and practices. And our main effort really is to help campuses lower the cost of education for their students and empower their faculty to use the materials that are most suited for their needs. Based on our experience with OER over the years, along with our partner collaborations and involvement with ATD, as I mentioned, we've learned a lot from that. We've compiled and developed a number of resources we feel are helpful in assisting campuses that are working on these OER degree programs. Uh, let me back up. I think I might have skipped over one. Um, oh, there we are, course maps. Uh, one of the requirements for the campuses involved in the degree initiative is to provide their course maps and we feel that the course maps are helpful visuals for designing the courses. Uh, the course maps should include links to the OER being used, should align with the backward design process, which some of you may be familiar with, identifying outcomes, determining what's acceptable evidence and designing the activities. Campuses that create content are asked to apply a CCBY license and follow accessibility standards. This is a project management timeline that we've shared with the campuses. We've received a number of course maps and syllabi already, and we expect a lot more of them will come to us in June as we approach the first target date. Some campuses will develop in three phases, some in two, and some are very close. They may finish in the first phase, depending on how far along they already were before funding was provided. All degree programs should be complete and delivered by fall of 2020. Degree program development coincides with asking campuses to submit their sustainability plans, which we are receiving the final plans now, and we're in the final stages of reviewing those plans. As part of the effort, we we'll recommend that campuses code their OER sections in their student information system so that students can easily locate their sections in the catalog. Again, this is just a recommendation, not a requirement. One of the requirements, however, of the campuses is that in order to receive funding, they must track and submit their OER sections into SUNY's Institutional Research Information System, also known as CIRRUS. The information organized and reported in CIRRUS is used to determine potential impact. 
And we use it at the system level for planning, academic and fiscal administration, things like budgeting, legal obligations, and reporting requirements imposed by New York State and federal agencies. Though not a requirement and not data we are asking for at the system level, we do encourage campuses to analyze their data around success and completion rates for their courses so that they can determine what kind of impact OER is having at the campus level and they can make decisions based on the outcomes of that data. And the way that we're supporting campuses uh, is a variety of ways. Uh, we hold monthly Zoom meetings with campuses to discuss and share their progress, their concerns and ideas. We most recently met yesterday. We have instructional designers at the administration level who review courses and corresponding course maps. We work closely with one of the reviewers from the ATD OER degree initiative when we have questions or need guidance at the system level. SUNY has partnered with Lumen Learning. We're asking campuses to share their completed courses in Candela. Many of you are familiar with Candela. It's Lumen's flavor of press books. If developing in their learning management system, we are asking for those zip files. And the plan is to convert all the courses into Candela. And the courses that are considered exemplars will be featured on SUNY's Ready to Adopt catalog, which can be found at oer.suny.edu. And I'll be sharing that website again toward the end. Uh, another way we provide support is through the SUNY Help Desk. They support the shared services and technologies around online learning for most of the campuses. And the SUNY Help Desk in turn works very closely with the SUNY OER services team, as well as the vendors and partners such as Lumen Learning. SUNY's goals for the OER degree initiative are aligned with some of the standard goals that we're all familiar with of OER, which are to reduce costs and materials and, and improve student success and also to help other SUNY schools scale OER across their campuses. Offering these degree pathways, uh, coupled with the Ready to Adopt catalog, we feel makes it a little bit easier and more appealing for some of these other campuses to accomplish this. We're also excited that by having a development underway for both baccalaureate and graduate level OER pathways, that it will be a little more appealing for other four-year institutions to take the initiative to start looking at OER degree program adoption and or development. One of the tools we're working on is a heat map that identifies which campuses are doing OER across the system, which courses they offer, and who has the OER degree programs. The goal of this map is to provide a visual representation of all the OER across the, the system for both internal and external interests. For internal purposes, it quickly allows us at the system level to see who's doing what. From an external perspective, it allows campuses the ability to self-serve for a lot of the questions we see at OER services, such as who in the system is using this resource, or who can I ask about OER in a particular subject area? And we think that the visual data um, will be very beneficial. It's being pulled from our database. We're planning to provide access to campus leads uh, to update their own data. So they'll have the ability to toggle on and off certain fields, such as whether or not to share their courses, their faculty names, and things like that. The tool has gone through an alpha testing phase uh, to identify issues and problems. We are now beta testing this, and we hope to roll it out soon so that it's more publicly facing. And uh, again, the website where we have our ready to adopt catalog, where hopefully this tool will ultimately reside is OER. Dot SUNY dot EDU. Una, I'm Great. Gonna stop, stop sharing here. Thank you so much, uh, Tony, for sharing that. Um, and uh, kind of a big system approach to uh, supporting the faculty. And I, I know you mentioned that uh, you've had funding to for, I, I think, three years now to really uh, support uh, the institutions. Yeah, we've been very fortunate in that uh, the first year we, we received uh, $4 million in funding, which was a major shot in the arm, and we've received uh, funding for subsequent years. We know eventually that, you know, that funding will, will go away, uh, so we're at the point now where we're trying to get campus to, to start thinking about sustainability efforts, and we're trying to lay the groundwork so it makes it a little bit uh, easier and a little more palatable for them. Great. Thank you. All right, James, please... Uh... Tell us about the California Community College Zero Textbook Cost Degree Program. Great, thanks, Una. Uh, I, I'm just so so impressed with with what what's going on in Minnesota and New York. It's hard to hard to turn my attention back to California. Um, I, I want to share first of all uh, I, I, that I might be the one here talking about the California Project, but the California Project has been supported by an incredible number of people uh, throughout our state. Uh, first and foremost, our really good friends at West Hills College Lemoore. 
uh, Ron Oxford and, and Kelsey Smith, who along with College of the Canyon serve as technical assistance providers. Uh, also, uh, Una Daly and CCC OER are, are absolutely essential partners on, on the entire project. But the real work uh, is happening at the colleges. So I'm speaking really at the 10,000 foot level about incredibly detailed and difficult work that's going on at local colleges. So I just want to acknowledge that right off the bat. Um, and uh, let's see if I can get the slides driving. So, so in California, uh, we've got a, a, a pretty solid structure in place uh, if we think about regulations and, and legal requirements. Uh, first of all, we have ZTC or Z degree, but we happen to call it zero textbook cost degree. We have that codified in our statewide uh, legal code around education. So you can see that here on the screen, defining a ZTC as a community college associate degree or, and I've added the emphasis, or career technical education certificates. So it doesn't have to be a degree, could also be a certificate earned entirely by completing courses that eliminate conventional textbook costs by using alternative instructional materials and methodologies, including open educational resources. So I'll hover there for a second. Many of you, uh, I, I'm sure, have thought that means that we might use other materials, we might switch to other instructional materials that are not OER, not openly licensed, and that is indeed true under the terms of the grant and the definition of, of ZTC in our state law. Uh, so we do have some instances in which grantee colleges have chosen to use, to, to integrate library databases. They're, they're paying for the library databases, but it's zero cost to students. What I like about this definition is that the focus is not on, made for better or for worse, something that we discuss in the OER community licenses, rather it's on the impact on students. It's, it's about eliminating the cost for students, so I appreciate that. Another point that this slide, that I want to make with this slide, is that logo, that image in the middle of the slide, the text, open textbook with the dollar sign in the middle and a slash through it, uh, suggesting zero costs for textbooks. Uh, separate from the ZTC program, uh, but very helpful, uh, our state legislature passed a law a few years ago that requires all state universities and community colleges to disclose in their schedules of classes any section, so a class level, a, a, a section level that has zero textbook costs. So that's, ha that's been happening at the same time that uh, colleges are developing their ZTCs and that's been very helpful. Also, one final point on the structure we have in place here in California, thanks to our friend Barbara Olowski and Cable Green, oh, I'm gonna say six or seven years ago, uh, they succeeded in uh, uh, persuading our state system office to uh, implement a requirement that any uh, any materials created under a state grant, a state community college system grant or contract has to carry a CC by license. So, so we have licensing, the definition, the disclosure to students, all of that is really uh, set in a structure here in California. So that, that's a really positive place to start. Um, our uh, ZTC degree initiative or our, the scope of our initiative is, is pretty broad, although I'm, I'm pretty envious of, of New York right now. Uh, our goal has been to support colleges in developing certificates and degrees. Uh, we currently have 28 colleges who have received a grant uh, they're producing 34 certificates and degrees, uh, estimated to serve 23,000 students over three years. Uh, the estimate from our grantees and the colleges we're working with is that they will save students almost $43 million over a three-year period, which is an 858% return on investment from the original $5 million investment that the state made. And I'll talk more about that in one second. The grants, uh, and I pardon me for the typo there, the grants end on, in June of 2019. All of our co colleges should have completed their work. Uh, we have uh, the opportunity to continue technical assistance, and I'll talk more about what that is in, in a few minutes. Uh, the support uh, that West Hills College of Lemoore, College of the Canyons, and CCC OER are offering, uh, we can continue that through December of this year. The materials here in our California project are required to be housed in 
something called the Vision Resource Center, which is a uh, online it's a content management system called Cornerstone. The product is called Cornerstone. The California Community College branding is Vision Resource Center. Unfortunately, uh, that is authenticated. So it's only available to people within the system, alas. However, our friends at West Hills College Lemoore uh, are working with our friends in the Cal State Chancellor's Office, which runs the Cool for Ed and the Merlot sites to find a way to house the content also in those sites so that the content is available to everyone as as we want it to be of course um uh i, I will uh, clarify or uh, add a little bit of information about where the original funding came from here in california uh back in the fall of 2015 a uh, an oer hero uh long time long time friend uh to many of us hal plotkin uh uh was able to secure a meeting at the California governor's office uh, to advocate for an investment, a significant investment in creating Z degrees. Uh, our friend Barbara was there uh, and, and am amazing range of, of leaders through, through the OER world were there and we successfully ad advocated for an investment in, in Z degrees. So that's where, that's where our funding came from originally. Uh, moving on. Uh, and something else that was fortuitous for us is that a new state chancellor, a system leader was put, new, new, new system leader came in a couple of years ago with a very, very clear vision uh, and a very clear determination to realign uh, many of the initiatives and many of the projects in the state around a singular vision uh, focusing on student outcomes and accountability. Um, and he and the state system has enunciated those visions and goals in, in, in a multitude of statements. And I've listed many of them here on the screen, which in my mind easily align with both OER and Z degrees. So throughout our project, we've encouraged our grantees uh, to express the value of their local projects, their Z degree, say in sociology or mathematics, to express the value of that in a way that our state legislators, that our state system will understand as supporting the overall goals for the system. For example, design with the student in mind. Well, certainly when we think about instructional materials, we're trying to de design a degree program that thinks about the impact on the student. Um, another bullet is leading, leading partnerships across systems. We've had the good fortune uh, to partner the California Community Colleges with the California State University system on a number of, of components of this project. So again, we, we think and we hope that uh, this has been well received by, by the folks in our state system and in our state legislature. And uh, we hope that our, uh, our grantees have, have been able to express their local value in this, in this way. Uh, here's the next slide shows a, a very quick uh, illegible, I know from a distance, a snapshot of where our grantees are, where are the colleges are that we that we participate, that we support. Uh, what I want to emphasize here is that they're all over the state. We have large colleges, small colleges, rural colleges, suburban colleges, uh, urban colleges. So it's it's quite a diverse uh, diverse uh, collection, like in New York. Uh, so that was very impressive to see. Uh, on the next slide, I'll show you just as an example the diversity of focus areas. On the one hand, on the left hand side of the screen, you see uh, some of the focus areas in traditional transfer disciplines, traditional liberal arts disciplines. On the right-hand side of the screen, you see a sampling of our career education disciplines. Half of the projects that the colleges are undertaking are in the career education area. So a precision agriculture, respiratory care, water systems technology, you know, really specialized content, specialized areas. I can speak about the water program, which is, is housed here at College of the Canyons. There simply is no quality content that our faculty know of in that field. Uh, so our faculty undertook to create that content, uh, working very closely with professionals in the field so that uh, the content, the instructional materials reflect the current state of state of knowledge in the field and the content has been really designed alongside uh, industry experts. So it's, it's been real, a real bonus uh, uh, to have this funding, not just to uh, create OER, but also to really uh, increase the currency or to ensure the currency of the, of the content in the field. Um, a couple of words about the technical assistance that West Hills College of the Moor, College of the Canyons, and CCC OER have been able to provide. Our, our major activities have, 
have revolved around building a community of practice via summits, conferences, workshops, monthly webinars that Una and Liz uh, facilitate for, with us. Uh, we're trying to ensure access to all via training on accessibility. Uh, we want to ensure that people respect the rights of creators through training on open licensing. We uh, have supported local imp implementations via on-site training, going to colleges to work with people there. Uh, we're documenting the impact via project evaluation. Uh, we hope that we're helping colleges to sustain their local momentum through leadership training. Uh, and maybe implicitly, we've tried to highlight the student voice throughout all of our activities, whether it's uh, being sure to have a student panel at our events or uh, writing up student success stories as, as part of our, our documentation of the project. Uh, we've really tried to, 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 to do that ourselves, speaking for technical assistance providers, and uh, tried to, to model that for, for our grantees that really this is about the students. Um, we also have uh, an increasing number of colleges here in Cal California that are working with students to in, engage them in the workflow of creating OER uh, and Z degrees. Uh, a, a side project that I love to mention is one that, that Barbara and uh, uh, the Michelson 20 Million Minds Foundation have supported uh, that we help help with here at College of the Canyons to develop a network of student OER advocates. So look for us out on the conference circuit. We're really proud of that project and we'll be talking a lot more about that. Um, and uh, then moving on, uh, uh, one, one, of the final, one of the final pieces of our support to our colleges is to help them, uh, to help the local uh, implementers turn their focus to away, towards sustainability. What does it look like on campus uh, to keep going? Uh, certainly we've tried to provide tools and, and, and ideas and vocabulary to uh, the, the, the grant managers, the administrative folks, but we also want to help colleges embed this kind of work around OER and Z degrees into other conversations that are happening on campus so it becomes mainstream really. And, and one of the projects uh, is entitled ZTC Equity Champions. I know we have a couple here on the call with us today, so that's great. Um, we, we're encouraging them to, or really in asking them to be explicit about linking OER and Z degrees to other large conversations on their campuses and in our system around reducing equity gaps and developing guided pathways. And I know those are conversations happening across the United States. So we want to make the point, we want them to make the point that anytime somebody's having a conversation about reducing equity gap, gaps, Z degrees have to be part of that or OER has to be part of that. Anytime an institution is talking about redesigning itself around pathways, Z degrees have to be part of that. So a, a, a real uh, concrete piece of that is a, uh, an online course that we've developed uh, for those equity champions that, that explicitly makes those links. Look for that to be released uh, to, to the open uh, later this summer. Uh, so hopefully you can integrate that in your own campus. Uh, and with that, I'm going to uh, think about my timing here and, tr and turn it back to Una. If you have any questions about this project, feel free to contact me, but I also want to acknowledge, our part again, our partners at West Hills College of Lemoore. Ron Oxford uh, is the lead over there, along with Kelsey Smith. So turn it back to you, Una. All right, thanks, James. If you could just stop sharing there for a minute, I think I will bring it back up. Let's see, I'm gonna stop share, stop share. There you go. Great, thank you so much. Um, all righty, so, um, I I want to engage our experts here um, on a couple of points. Um, and we're, we're also looking for your questions there in the chat window. So while we're waiting for that, um, let me just uh, ask a question here. And so, you know, I think these are very, three very distinctive um, OER Z degree uh, projects and uh, very unique. And they've had different starting points and stakeholders who were driving uh, these programs. And so I wanted to give um, each of our speakers a chance to, to delve into uh, that particular piece. What was that initial motivation? Who were the stakeholders who really um, brought this forward initially? And, and Lori Beth, I, I'd like to let you talk a little bit about the project there at Central Lakes. 
Um, I think you need to unmute yourself, Lori. There we go. Uh, Karen Pikula was our initial champion and she ran learning circles for a few years. And uh, we had uh, initiative grants from the state to begin this work. And um, it just kind of grew organically. And as more and more people became involved in the, the uh, usefulness. I started because I felt like this is what I've always done. I don't like teaching with textbooks and in um, ESL and reading, I felt like there weren't what I needed to connect with students. So I, you know, I, I ended up on one of Karen Pakula's learning circles just to convert my courses, actually get paid to convert my courses, <laughs> which is what I was always doing. We were offered stipends. And we just continued from there. Wonderful. So it was very faculty driven because, of course, Lori Beth and Karen are faculty. Yep, and, completely. You know, from an organic perspective. And I think not that um, the other projects that um, Tony and James have shared uh, weren't, of course, very faculty driven, but they might not have started initially with faculty. They it came mm -hmm. up a, a little bit from a little bit different direction. So. Um, Tony or James, do you want to, or Lori, Beth, did you have anything else you wanted to share there? No. no. Okay. Thanks. Tony or James, do you want to talk a little bit more about that? Tony, yeah, please go ahead. Sure, I'll jump in. Um, so we, the initial motivation for this was our involvement with the Achieving the Dream OER Degree Initiative. That was really what kind of spurred this on at the SUNY level. We, we saw um, how much success we 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 were able to receive from that. Uh, and anecdotally, we know students like the OER. Uh, they're asking uh, their instructors for it, for their courses that, you know, where it isn't most prevalent. Uh, student governments have happily embraced it. So uh, we already had a fairly strong OER degree foundation started, so we felt we'd see more success and be able to build upon that success, again, resulting from the initial ATD effort. Okay, thank you, Tony. And there was a question from Rodney in the chat, and he said, did the system-wide initiatives start on a specific campus or were they always top-down? No, they actually started really um, at the campus level. Again, the five uh, community colleges within SUNY were part of the initial ATD consortium. Um, it, it really started course by course and then focused on program by program and then, you know, started to scale into the consortium. So that's really how it began. Great. And, and James, you might have a different perspective on that. Well, you know, I, I would say that the, you know, the, the real work is certainly done on the campuses by the faculty members and the staff. Uh, there's no question about that. You can't, you can't convert a course. You can't search for content. You can't. Uh, uh, format for accessibility if you're sitting in, you know, in a dean's office or at a system level. Uh, but so, so there's no doubt about about the grassroots or campus involvement, uh, faculty and staff involvement, that's absolutely essential. But in my mind, also, there's no doubt that, let's say, the top level, I, ha I hate to th you know, think of that hierarchically, but, you know, the, the, the executives, the, the leaders in, with whatever title, Somebody's got to get the money. Somebody's got to write the legislation. Somebody's got to be in, in the in the legislature. Somebody's got to got to write the write the advocacy piece, write the legislation. So uh, in California, we've just had this amazing confluence of events, uh, in which, at the grassroots level, a lot of things were bubbling along. You know, there were a lot of institutions, whether it's Foothill to Anza or College of the Canyons, or Santa Ana College or West Hills Lemoore where faculty and, and, and middle managers were, were moving things along and excited about OER. And then on the other hand, David Wiley, Hal Plotkin, Barbara Lowski had the vision to say, we're going to get into the governor's office and we're going to make a big ask, right? So, so those kinds of things just came together, really. It's, 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 it's hard for me to, to think about how one programs those things. I, can, I see it always in retrospect. You know, three years ago, I wasn't thinking about Z degrees make perfect sense as guided pathways. I never would have said that. 
Today, it seems as obvious as oxygen and water to me. How could you do a guided pathway if it were not a Z degree? It just seems like a disservice to our students. But I, I don't have the ability to think of that ahead of time. <laughs> All right, thanks, James. Yeah, th those are, and thanks to all of our speakers on that unique perspective. And Michael had a question, which I think uh, maybe one or but all of you might want to address. He asked about any pushback from any stakeholders. Um, and he mentions, you know, faculty, publishers, or the bookstore. Um, and I suspect that there was some pushback, even though c often it was a concerted effort. Um, anyone like to speak to that? I can speak just a little bit to that. We have faculty, of course, who are uh, uh, concerned about uh, intellectual property. And uh, so we, we don't have uh, fully cooperative union support, which is, I don't know, maybe necessary, I don't know. I'm kind of new at the whole big picture thing. And our bookstore uh, was beginning to lose money, of course. And so we've been working. And plus, it was quite complicated to get the still in process of getting the, um, the process of how to buy books for courses that are Z degrees. And what does that mean? It's not traditional. Right. Well, yeah, thank you for that. Um, uh, on the note of pushback, you mentioned publishers. I'll, I'll tell you how n now I see it. I, I didn't see it at the time, but how um, how decisively publishers have really given up the physical textbook market and, and how decisively they're planning to move into what we know is going on with the access codes and inclusive access. Three years ago when three years and two years ago when the legislation was being considered to authorize the funding for our program here in California, the only objections or really suggestions that the publishing lobbyists uh, put into the conversation were, A, we should put into legislation a requirement that the content uh, comply with the copyright, with copyright right law. B, we should, insist on bookstores being a part of the conversation at the local campus. And C, we should insist on uh, material being accessible. It's a no-brainer, all of those, sure. It, you know, but uh, now I see that their heart really wasn't in objecting to it because they've been planning something else all along, which we're starting to see today. Okay. All right. Thank you, James, um, for that. And um, Tony, any any thoughts on pushback, um, either within or or outside your system? Yeah, I mean, well, with regard to James, I agree with what he says. We haven't really seen much pushback uh, at, at this level and at this juncture. Um, you know, back in the early days of OER, and I think probably many people, Udi, you're probably very familiar with this. There was pushback from faculty. What is this OER thing? It's not good quality. You know, all of those arguments. We don't want our, you know, uh, colleagues' courses to be listed as OER in the in the SIS or in the catalog. We don't think it's fair. All of that stuff changed at some of the campuses, uh, in particular the one where I originally came from, where the culture just shifted a lot. So I, I think OER has found its place on campuses. It, it's it's part of you know what we do now. Um, the bookstores, by and large, have been uh, excellent to work with. Uh, in particular, in my case, again, coming from the campus perspective, we, ha we were a fall at school, and uh, the bookstore manager there was great to work with. Initially, the publishers weren't happy um, when we made the switch, and uh, some faculty have had some interesting stories about that. But I don't think we're seeing too much of that. And as James has mentioned, they've shifted their business model for the better. Great. All right. Super. Um, and so I, I, I realize that um, these, these are pretty rich discussions we're having. And so I'm going to skip over that question on repositories, because I think you all addressed some of that up front. And I, I want to ask you this question. It's a, it's, it's a more general question, and each of you may have a unique way of approaching this. But what do you think is the most important benefit of the OERZ degree, degrees for your students? Um, you know, so far, uh, we have some anecdotal evidence. I don't think that there's any, uh, we don't have long-term uh, 
outcomes data at this point on the Z degrees because they've just been deployed fairly recently. Um, but can you, what, what is your thought about the most important benefit for students, um, perhaps beyond cost? And maybe cost is a piece of it. And, and why, um, you know, wh why is this so important? And what have students said? Can you, can you share some of their thoughts and um, how, they're, uh, how they're addressing uh, the ZTZ degrees? I'm, I'm happy to start. Sure. Um, our, our friend Amanda Taintor from Reedley College conducted a survey of Reedley College students uh, a couple of years ago asking about the impact of textbook costs and included the option for open-ended responses. And one of the responses really, really sticks with me. Uh, a student said, the system sucks. The system is rigged. The rich get richer and stay rich. The poor get poorer and stay poor. Poor can't go to college, can't get educated, and so on. And that, you know, it tears at my heart. I think it tears at all of us as, as educators. But it made me realize that, and I've heard this elsewhere and seen anecdotal evidence of this elsewhere, that student, many students view some of us as part of the dang system that is part of rich, the rich staying rich and the poor staying poor. And that's not what I, why I signed up to be an educator, you know. I, I, so, so taking away that feeling that students have of getting nickeled and dimed, paying a fee for this, paying a fee for that, and constantly, constantly thinking about money, removing that worry, removing that cynicism to a little extent, I hope will be the primary benefit. Helping our students to believe that education is indeed a social good, as well as you know, a good for them personally. Thank you, James. Um, Tony or Lori? Yeah, I'll jump in uh, briefly. I, I agree uh, with what James said. He made some great points. Um, you know, just from campus anecdotes, I think one of the greatest benefits to students, again, it's tied to cost saving, but um, the ability for them to take more courses to graduate sooner, um, you know, it makes it possible. But the other thing is not having to deal with uh, systems that are locked down and the, the technological challenges and nightmares that, that go along with that, having access to the, the information day one, or possibly even, you know, in many cases within SUNY, a week before the courses begin. And they're able to keep that information and, you know, not pay for it or, or buy an inexpensive version of a textbook. So I think there are a lot of different benefits to students, and obviously the benefits to faculty as well. And as I digress a little bit, faculty, um, you know, from the pedagogical perspective, they have a lot more freedom over the curriculum and, and they're able to shape that content in their, uh, in their um, lesson plans based on their specific needs. And I think it engages the students more. Wonderful. And, and I have certainly heard that as well from students, um, that the, their professors who are teaching with OER seem to be more engaged. They understand the material better. And, um, Lori, I want to give you a chance to. I think I think also um, all of uh, all of the courses I teach are uh, use open ed resources, and I actually authored the book for the reading class because I didn't feel it was bridging a gap very well between what students know and what they need to know. Um, in global studies, we were in you know very small rural Minnesota, and to create materials that are not necessarily for a junior at a four-year college in the middle of an urban area, um, I can connect the, the uh, objectives of a global study class to what the students are doing. In addition, we're also moving into more open pedagogy and asking students to write units for all of these classes. So I think we're, we have enough um, open ed resources courses, so we're actually moving in that direction which is pretty exciting on a little small campus. Yeah, thank you for that, Lori. It's wonderful to get that faculty perspective. And I just want to touch back on what James had said about taking that worry away from students. And um, we did a few impact stories uh, of students this last year who were involved in ZTZ degrees. And one of them had gone part-time for many years. And she said the reason she went part-time was because she couldn't afford the textbooks and that required her to go part-time. And when she heard about the Z degrees, this was just so exciting for her. And she is now gonna graduate this spring because she was able to come back full-time um, after some stopouts. So 
it really, um, talking to students has really been an eye opener about how this takes a lot of stress out of their lives and makes it possible for them to move quicker, as Tony mentioned. Can I say one other thing, Una? Yeah, please do. On topic of benefits, not, not a benefit for students necessarily, but maybe just a, a personal benefit of working on a statewide project. And I'm curious if Tony and, and Lori Beth have found this as well. I have I've met and, and been able to be inspired by so many leaders in our California community colleges whom I didn't know before. You know, you just think, oh my gosh, there, you know, there's so many incredible people out there working on this project who who started to form this network, you know. And it's just it's just uh, just stunning for me and gratifying for me to 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 see the the strength and passion and leadership at, all, at at so many of our colleges. So that's been really, really gratifying. Yeah, we've seen the same thing. And, and one of the primary focuses of uh, SUNY OER services is uh, creating these communities of practice. And they've really taken on a life of their own. And it, and it is exciting and, and reassuring and uh, pleasing to see that, you know, faculty are so engaged and they're passionate about this. Uh, and they're very staunch supporters of it. So we've seen that as well. Great. I, I'm going to move to our, our last question. And um, it, keeping an eye on the chat here as well. But so what are your plans for growing and sustaining uh, your OER ZTZ degrees? And I know this is this is a long, <laughs> a long answer question, but um, in the short term, um, and you know, you can give us our your longer term vision uh, later if need be, but um, where do you see this going next? And Lori Beth, how about if I start with you? Sure, on, a, on our little campus we um, are hoping to apply for a um, well our, our very short term is a campus budget right so we've we're we our campus is now investing money into our efforts and so in the fall and spring next year our community of practice uh, with open uh, OER open pedagogy will be uh, funded by the campus, but we hope to do a multi-campus um, initiative in, in the following year. So hopefully that'll be a state initiative. Those that's just our little our um, efforts at sustainability right now. Okay, I don't know about further than that. All right. Well, that's that's it's good that you're focusing on next year. That's wonderful. Yeah. All right. Um, James or Tony, who would like to go next? Well, I, I think we've got maybe three three different levels here uh, in California. First of all, I think sort of short term, uh, we've encouraged the colleges to connect OER and ZTC to other things that are happening at their campus. So the a lot of a lot of initiatives and funding around reducing equity gaps a lot of initiative and funding around creating guided pathways. So we're encouraging and we hope giving tools to our grantees to make that case internally that here at this college, we should be part of the guided pathways plan. That's sort of short term. Medium term, our statewide faculty senate here in California Community Colleges were, was successful in receiving funding from the state legislature to uh, support adoption uh, and, and creation in some in some courses uh, of, of OER content, and in particular to work on uh, homework systems, uh, openly licensed homework systems, first in math and then in other STEM fields. So that's a that's a wonderfully faculty driven project. I think in the medium term, uh, and they've got funding for a number of years. In the medium term, that's going to help drive awareness and and bring more uh, resources to the ecosystem. And then long term. Uh, the collective, we are working on uh, refunding the ZTC project. So hopefully uh, in, a, in a year or two, uh, we will continue what we've already started here, but we'll be doing it uh, perhaps uh, with a foundation of more content and greater awareness, thanks to our colleagues at the Statewide Academic Senate. Tony, would you like to address that question? Sure. Uh, I think, you know, the great work that's going on in California and Minnesota and so, and so many other states, New York, um, you know, just in, in SUNY, we talked about the 15 plus OER degree programs we have now. 
we hope that this current body of work uh, and the Ready to Adopt catalog will, will spur on other SUNY campuses to, to look at uh, adopting and creating their own OER degree pathways. We're not entirely shifting the focus away from degree programs. We think it's very important and we want to continue to support those and will continue to support those. Um, but we're also funding some creation projects uh, in order to plug some of those gaps where there's a lack of needed courses. And there's a lot of collaborative effort going on right now. And that's one of the things we're working on, uh, bringing cohorts of campuses together to talk about some of these things and to talk about some of the things that are most important to them. That may be the creation of more degree programs. It could be collaborating on individual courses. So, um, so, so we're looking at that, but we're, we're taking some different approaches and focusing our efforts in some other areas as well. Okay, thank you very much, Tony. And you know, we're just coming up on the hour. Um, I just have a few more slides. Um, and if you have questions uh, out there, uh, please just type them in the chat window and we'll hit those in just a moment. Um, I just wanted to let you know, if you're not currently on our community email list and would like to join, the link is right there. Um, it's on our, our website. And if you go to cccoer.org and go to the community email link, you can join our conversation and our ongoing um, yeah, conversation. We, and we advertise all our webinars and all of our archives are sent out on this list as well. Um, we have one last uh, spring webinar um, in um, June, on June 5th, on regional models for OER adoption. And this is really an uh, exciting um, area that's developing, and we will have the Midwestern Higher Ed uh, Compact joining us, and also folks from the Pennsylvania Affordability uh, Textbook Program joining us for that webinar. So we hope to see you on June 5th. And we want to thank you once again for joining us today. And um, if I haven't seen any other questions at this point, um, but um, if you have any in the next few minutes, just go ahead and type those in the chat window. I think uh, um, Lori, Beth, James, and Tony will be here for a few more minutes. And I want to thank them profusely for their, for their time and expertise uh, this afternoon. Um, just a, really a wealth of information on um, OER and ZTZ degrees, the motivation, the impact, and um, some of the challenges. All right, thanks everyone. Thank you. Bye guys, great job, Tony and Lori Beth. Th and thank you, Una and Liz. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thanks to all of you as well. Likewise. All right, have a great afternoon. You too.